Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome back. This is Neogentrix from Dark Cancer Discussions on Wisdom. Here we are back on YouTube. Again, we're going to go ahead and cover our another topic. Like I said before, people can come in and out. These are live discussions that I'm taking the recording from and I'm posting on YouTube. Hopefully you all enjoy this. If you like what you hear, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button down below. Leave a comment if you have a topic you want me to talk about again later or you want to be part of a future talk. Uh, the link in the description below will take you to the Wisdom app where you can find my... Uh, my other recordings and you can uh, add me and follow me so when i go live if i end up talking about a topic that you want to talk about uh, you can chime in most of the time when i do mine it's going to be early in the morning about 3 a.m but i also could do them during the day it depends on what the topic is um, i might do it midday i might do it in the evenings it just depends so if you, again, if you like what you see here, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, now let's get started. Today's topic here in episode two is does morals still exist in our lives today? Y'all might like this one. I have a guest in today's episode, uh, Sapphire. She's also on Wisdom. So it's definitely something to look forward to. So let's be, uh, begin. that out okay well i guess i'm live again if there anyone is listening i don't think there is but that's perfectly fine you know what it would it be what it what you know what it is you know as it stands this is neogentrix again from dark cancer productions and you know it kind of it you know it's three o'clock in the morning i don't it's really expect there to be anybody up at this hour this is generally when I record my podcast anyway, so it's perfectly fine. I'm, I'm not, you know, I guess you can say I'm just a night out. But the question that I have is when you consider our day-to-day -day lives and the way everything functions or goes about, you know, the way society's set up with rules and things in place, makes the question, you know, do morals even still exist in our society? Or have they become a fad? <clears throat> to the extent of just something that was a trending thing in the, you know, back in the nineties uh, or early two thousands, then no one even cares about it anymore. No one thinks about, no one listens, no one, you know, addresses. It is a, it's still a problem. Uh, and I say this because like, it's a thing that should still be taught. It is kind of being taught, but it's not being taught the way it should be. And I'm not saying there's a right and a wrong way to teach what morality is. What I'm saying is, back in the in the late '90s, when we when when you consider morality, it was always something that was included in most uh, children cartoons, most adult cartoons, things of that nature. Like they would make fun of a lot of things. They would make fun of like social norms. They'd make fun of uh, reality, our president, the way everything happens. But at the end of the day, they'd always end something off with talking about a morality lesson in some way or another, whether it been for adults or kids. Kids shows were more, uh, more functional with this because the morality lesson was either usually taught in the episode or they would have a morality thing at the end of the episode. For anyone who, uh, you know, remembers the TV show Animaniacs, this was a thing for them at the end of every episode to spin the, what they call it, the wheel of morality. You know, so it's a thing that exists for the long run. It was always there. And even though none of the messages ever actually made sense, the point in the episode was always made. Um, things that you definitely shouldn't do, like lying is definitely wrong. But then, you know, this is where the morale morality bias of the, the current society steps in yeah lying is wrong except for when it's right i'm sorry but what does that even mean but i ask that question loosely because i we all know what it means there's not a single person on this planet that can be 100 percent moral without lying in some regard like oh yes definitely it's wrong to lie to people i that i can admit that i can attest to but at the same time Apparently, there are times where lying is okay, and this stems between relationships, everyday life, working for somebody, uh, handling business. 
you know, I, I'm talking about whether immoralities even still exist in our society, but if I have to break it down, we might as well talk about each individual one, starting with lying. Like, there's not a day, and parents are notorious for this, there's not a day that goes by where a parent doesn't lie to their child. I'm sorry, but if you, you can turn around and sit here and tell me that you haven't done it, but there's always some point, at, there's always something at some point where you lie to your kid, even if it's meant to protect them, or it's something the meaning, or you're just messing with them. A lie is a lie, no matter how you look at it. Like, if you're going to the store, or, or going out to drink with your buddies, right, and you don't want your kid to come with you, and you're leaving them with, uh, with a, um, a babysitter, no one in their right mind tells their kid, hey, I'm going out. And the kid's like, can I come with you? Where are you going? Where are you going? And the mom or the dad responds with, yeah, I'm going to go drink. I'm going to drink with my buddies. No parent tells their child this. They tell them it's none of their business or don't worry about it or I'm just going to the store or we're going to visit a friend. You know, the, you're never going to 100% tell the truth for to, to anything for any reason. I don't think I've known a single person that hasn't lied to their kid in some regard. Hell, my cousins do it too. And then, this, you know, I'm talking about lying. But let's go ahead and reverse it 360. Talk about honesty. Honesty and truthfulness are two things that run hand in hand. They're two different things, but they run hand in hand. And it, 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 it's a concern, you know. It's one of those many things that it, it exists. It's, it's there. It, uh it's a thing to be weary of. And most people don't stop to think about it. They don't stop to ask questions. They don't, you know, consider the the proxy of what happens when they do this. It, it's just a thought. What, what What is being truthful? What is being honest? What is not lying, essentially? Well, for one, not trying to come up with an excuse for something or why something happens the way it does that would be an example of that this person can't be in two lanes at the same time my god um <laughs> so the cool thing about this platform is that i don't need to be <laughs> actually touching the phone to uh, to talk so that's a plus um so I'm able to drive and, and and listen if anyone wants to say something, or if uh, I need to make a point. It's it's all free range thought. Me being me, and it's a thing. Okay, looks like Sapphire wants to step in. Let's see what she has to say. Greetings, hello, hello. Joshua. Hi. What's up? I just I, I just noticed you you're, you're the talking, only one so. that seems to be live today. And I was liking your topic um where you was talking about does morals still exist in our lives and I feel connected by that topic because it's relevant in the times we're living in today and it's always been relevant for me anyway. How are you? I'm good. Uh, I worked all night. I drive as a I, I work as an Uber and Lyft driver. I literally just finished, so I'm actually heading home. The good thing about this is I don't actually have to touch or deal with my phone, so I don't ever have to look down at it. So that's good. Uh, I, listen, yeah, I, I was get listening what you mean. to you it's earlier. Free. It's safe. You're not distracted. <laughs> yeah. You're focused. It's like being on. It's like having a passenger in the back seat and you're having a conversation while driving, basically. Yep. I, I've done, uh, I, I did some live recordings earlier with a different platform with some passengers. Uh, the, the topics that people talk about, the things that they discuss, you know, it's amazing to me the things that people think about, they want to talk about, but they're afraid to say something. And then they meet a person like me who's not afraid to talk about it and doesn't really care about the repercussions. Because as far as I'm concerned, if this is bothering you, why are you here? Oh, do you find that you yeah, offend yeah. people, Joshua? Is that been your experience? Oh, quite often because, you know, people don't want to talk about the obvious. They don't want to talk about the, the elephant in the room. They just want to, it's like having a garden, right? And you have the weed starts growing in the middle of the garden. It starts killing everything. Instead of removing the weed, everyone just talks about the weed and it continues to grow and destroy whatever it's there. And 
I'm, I, don't, okay. I don't understand that. But then so again, I'm, who who's who who gets to decide what the weed is, Joshua? Do you look at it in that way too? Yeah. Isn't it everyone's choice sure. to decide what the weed is? It's not just one person's responsibility. Yeah, everyone... Then that's control, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Which is why I feel like, you know, if no one wants to talk about it, fine, I'll talk about it. But I'm not going to be defined by what everyone else says. And, you know, when I Definitely. thought about the topic of morality, I was like, you know, morality is the same problem. You know, it's something that has existed for years. It used to be the defining way of life. And now, you know, culture has decided, you know what? Morality is what we make it. And then it doesn't need to mean what it used to mean. And while I, I want to agree with that, I mean... The word itself should mean what it says. If you say honesty, it should be, you know, honesty. It should be truthful. It should because that's what truthfulness okay. is. Not okay. Oh, so I'm, I'm going to cut I'm in only right telling now. Half a lie. Huh? Okay, I'm going to cut in right now because I'm going to make you pin what you just said right there, if you don't mind, because I know my time's going okay, down, cool. and I'm... I know there might be other guests coming, so I don't want to hold up your seat. So. I'm going to say oh, I was listening <laughs> to your argument, meaning your statements before entering, right? I just need to see the topic and right. then I need to listen for a little while to know what the narrative is and the agenda. So I heard you say <laughs> that Go basically, um, sorry, I've got a bit of a cold. Um, I heard that, I'm not really sorry, what, it's just a being politically correct when I say that. I'm not taking the piss. But what I meant is I heard you say <laughs> something like... Um, is it really the truth when people then mm -hmm. make excuses for what they're stating? And I liked what you said, but I'm going to have you up about that because then it's like, just that, that means you reject whatever response is being said to you because you get to choose what is honest and actually is politically correct for that individual state and their truth. I can tell you right now, sometimes the truth is what it is. Like you said, people don't like, that weed they don't want to deal with it they don't want to deal with the toxic side of life they want to reject it and ignore it and act like it's not there and then there are people that will then claim they know what it is about that situation but have never walked in that actual situation they're speaking as a third person or part of a situation that they only heard via gossip or hearsay and they have no knowledge based on that fact their statement so i will say for my own self right when it comes to different morals right. and different perceptions remember everybody has been governed in different environments there's been people that we've had to go to school with their upbringing has been totally different from ours joshua as you've seen when you've gone through the institutions that you've gone into right and we're in different locations so definitely our environments are totally different different and our moral <laughs> stance will be different not because we are different in our sexual features of our body. It's just our upbringing would be different. Our, um, maybe our mental health would be different. Our well-being needs will be different. Our DNA may be different. There's a lot of um, financial factors that will be different. Our environmental factors will interplay with our morals. Because like when you see in the workplace, right, everybody knows there's a form of exploitation and abuse going on. But nobody's bothered to do nothing about it because that manager's not shitting on their backyard. It's not their issue. And everybody watches someone be suppressed and actually ignored, disciplined and exploited until it's happening to them. Nobody's bothered about it until it's like everybody coming together. That's when you see who the strong and who the weak are. So what I will say is morals still do exist. For a few of us, yes. And even the ones who will be silent with the truth, that won't be confident and have the courage to advocate and say, you know what, enough is enough. I don't like this. It doesn't mean that they're less than just because they haven't found the strength to say, I stand for this, I'm against this. It might be due to education, knowledge. It might be due to financial restraints or their personal situation, which may silent them in conversation of being able to say, you know what, I, I can take a stand. We've seen that when it came to slavery. We've seen that when it came to child abuse. We've seen that when it came to um, when we've been at work. So we can't be ignorant based on what we perceive as true. And what we will say is our morals and what we will uphold for ourselves. We have to be realistic in the times we're living and know that everybody is trying to break bread and feed their 
children in that household. And just like when people say on social media, I'm not trying to say I'm against what you said, Joshua, just to be honest and fair, true, because I know that I'm saying it in a tone that might Actually, come to across be fair, you, uh... like I'm trying to lay down the law. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just trying to say when when I was a little girl and I was below the age of five, I was watching the news from when I was about three. I was, I was very awoken from early, okay, in lots of different ways. And then I chose to cocoon myself because once I saw what was really happening, it scared me. It really did when I saw that what was being normalized was not normal and in keeping with what I knew in my core spirit was unnatural and disgusting behavior, okay? So what I'm saying is we're all gonna awaken at different times. Our moral stance, like some, some when I was a young parent, I had three children before the age of 25, right? That is that, some, some people would see that as a form of madness in itself and it was madness because my, um, my actual, um, I had hijacked my healing journey of my historical trauma by choosing to be a parent to escape my abuse in my mum's house. I had to get myself pregnant, okay? And some people may say, Sophia, that's an excuse. But no, that was the reality and that was the truth. And that might not be fit into society, but sometimes people will see people's um, reasons for making unwise choices to be not in keeping with what they will choose for themselves and will reject it based on their stance and their knowledge or their experiences and that's ignorance because at the end of the day right we are all trying to do the right thing deep down we are maybe for ourselves some of us and maybe some of us are trying to do the right thing by everybody and maybe not by ourselves at times but it doesn't mean that one is above and one is below it just means that people will be strong and people will be weak at times and they will need to grow and break at times, yeah? And we need to be patient. We don't need to be dictating what is acceptable to others. We just need to simulate that and project that outwardly so others then be able to follow that mould and that tribe. Because I noticed something when I was a parent. I could tell my children, clean up, stop being dirty, stop doing this, stop doing that. If your actions are not doing what you're saying, on paper if you're not being your character yeah if your m words don't meet and match your character they're just they're just white noise they're dead words do you know what i mean i'm not talking about you joshua because i've never known you and i've never heard your talks but what i'm saying is a lot of times we're expecting other people <laughs> to do things that we're not ready to do ourselves, and that's being ignorant so what i'm saying is we need to have understanding and if we don't have understanding, then we become ignorant and then we're not helping or resolving the issues that we are complaining about and saying, you know what, that's wrong. I don't agree. I think things need to improve. We're becoming part of the problem, just like the government. OK, God bless you. Oh, dang. I didn't realize that the timer ran strict on these, but no, uh, I, I'm... <laughs> She beat me to the punch. Uh, that was kind of the whole point I was trying to get to. Uh, the whole premise of it. Like I have a, like my entire podcast uh, uh, that I have on uh, on YouTube. Uh, I'm putting it on YouTube. So, uh, but I've had the podcast since 2017. This is one of those things that I uh, that I, that I, that I cover. And she made a very good point of everything that I was trying to get to. Do morals still exist in our lives? Yes. You know, so every everything has a, you know, it's a it's a thing. So she's covered most of the basic points that I meant. The whole premise of my podcast, but uh, that I'm moving to YouTube because I feel that you know I I need to be available on more and more platforms. Is food for thought, things to consider, and the premise is thoughts if it were you. So how would you feel if you were in the other person's shoes? Does this apply? So my question, you know, does morals still exist in our lives? Yes and no. For the simple fact, like she said, every situation is different. It depends on circumstances. It depends on where you were, how you were raised, you know, what's going on in your life. Everything matters. Uh, not really. A, <laughs> wow. So 
not really a lot left to cover as far as what I wanted to say, but if anyone else has anything they want to add in, by all means. Um, but my whole thing was, you know, what is each uh, each individual moral? Do they still stand? Which ones have basically disappeared from society? And or if it hasn't disappeared, has it changed for them? You know, like like I was going to say earlier, you know, honesty and truthfulness are two different things, but they've become so interchangeable nowadays that the line between what is a lie and what is truthful has been so blurred that it doesn't matter anymore. No one person should be the judge of what is truthful and what is honest. But if you're in your mind, you, the person who's actually telling the story to someone else, whether it's a kid or whatnot, if in your head, you know it's not the truth because you're your own governing factor. You can only decide what you know in your head is true or not. If in your head, you know it's a lie and you're telling them anyway, as if it was a fact, then to the kid, it's true, but to you, it's false. And in that regard, you know, it's considered in your, in the person speaking it, and in their mind, that's a lie. Because they're telling it like it's a truth, but they know that it's not true and it's a lie. And that's where lies, truthfulness, and honesty fit together. Because if you're going to be 100% honest by the definition of the word and not by, you know, any certain restraints, then being honest means being 100% truthful with them, but only in the sense that unlike truthfulness where you're required to be 100% true with honesty, you're not. So, oh, hello. Who do we got? Oh, she's back. <laughs> uh, she'll have 10 minutes. Okay, well, by all means, let's uh, let's hear what else you got to say. Uh, I'm, I'm curious because I would love to use this uh, as part of my podcast material. So, But at any, you know, in that regard. So what other morals are there that exist? There is attentiveness, there's goodness, there's so many. Perseverance is apparently immoral. Go figure. <laughs> oh my Thanks God. Thanks for that, Joshua. Um, I won't keep you too long because I'm kind of hogging the seat now. Maybe I like your conversation and um, this topic a bit much more than I should have. <laughs> but no, I was thinking about um, a moral being forgiveness, right? I'm now 39, believe it or not, but yeah. I am 39. But my voice might not sound like it, but I am 39. And um, what I've realised in my life is that once upon a time, I used to forgive everybody who trespassed against me in the sense that um, I didn't feel like a good individual or was good in the eyes of God to um, hold grudges and stuff like that, right? And then I was like... All right having certain experiences with family members okay this is still keep in keeping with your does morals still exist in our life because i feel like it's definitely our environments and our family that teach us help teach us and mold us to have some morals okay so i realized with my brother just for example he decided to be a chatty batty and that's the word for someone who is a gossip head and tells your information to someone else that you don't like you clearly don't like and it's just to trigger you into relapsing into a vicious way towards that individual. And then you're having a, a mental or emotional setback. So I basically called time on the relationship with my brother because I said to myself, you know what? I'm on my healing journey and I get to choose what I receive in this lifetime. And it's my relationship with the universe is between me and God, not man, not mankind. My focus doesn't have to be on um everyone else because when you're focused on everyone else you're delaying a relationship with the creator that's what i know to be true for myself and i'll speak for myself okay so when it came to my moral stance yesterday it was i'll forgive everybody and allow them to eat up my flesh destroy me because that makes me look good in the eyes of god that i've been able to take it and um take it and um take it for the sake of wanting to appear that I was righteous maybe or wanting to be righteous um, and be pleasing in God's eyes and then I continued my journey when I was like I was raised as a Christian and yes I do believe in the creator so when um, I went away from Christianity and went on my journey again I remember seeing that when I started my healing journey and it became really profound that 
I had had a conversation with God. I've had several conversations with God in my lifetime. And he spoke to me when I was six and I was attempting to do something very harmful to myself that I would have come back from, okay? And I'll say it in that way. Everyone knows what that is. So I'll just say it in that way because I'm not trying to trigger anyone. So what I'm saying is, I remember God saying to me that whatever you do, don't allow Satan to um, make you hate your family. So I've chosen to have a new stance now. I've, I took that on board and I silenced myself for several years when I was having abuse. And then I've taken a new stance now. And it doesn't mean I'm rebuking God or rejecting God's words. God never told me to lie and hide my abuse. He said, don't hate your family. That's what he said. But I misinterpreted what those words meant for me there in that situation and what it would mean in the future. So all you have to do in in order to still uphold morals in the sense that you might have certain principles about family. When somebody has hurt you and persecuted you without cause and intention several times over for decades, right? You get to choose if that person has a relationship with you tomorrow and it's your call. It's not your family or your friend, call a friend. Or what do you think about this situation? You have to really connect with the spirit within and you have to have a conversation with God. And I remember when it came to anybody doing me anything, God just said, just forgive them. It didn't say, um, what's that word I like to say? Apology accepted, access denied. Yes, it is. Just like there's going to come a time, whether we believe it or not, we all hold different faiths. I'm not preaching here, so don't misinterpret what I'm saying. There's going to be a beginning and there's going to be an end. And just like when we see a flower in the garden, it, it is born and it dies, okay? And then it's reborn. So I believe um, we're eternal, okay? The spirit within is eternal. And I don't believe um, death exists. I don't believe that is what happens. Nature shows us that when we are, um, when something dies, the outer core, the outer shell dies, the seeds go down to the earth and it comes back up. And there's um, there's more to life than we've been told. And I can't go into it more than that, but I'm connecting with the morals because I want to stay on Joshua's topic and say that in my experience, the morals that you choose to hold, your responsibility, and it has to be a governing a relationship with yourself and whatever you choose to believe for yourself, right? In terms of the universe or God, if you want it to be that, because as much as I know, um, what I will know and receive and have seen and can testify what I have seen and experienced. We've all experienced different things. Just like when I've asked people, have you heard God's voice? And they've said no. And I said, well, your time ain't up. So there might be time when that's going to happen. And when it came to about forgiveness, getting back, what I'm saying to you is sometimes we can let people go and we can wish them well. We just don't have to keep them in our life and it doesn't make us bad. And there's no one that should convince us that we're bad or we're holding a grudge. Sometimes it's better to love someone from a distance for the benefit of everybody. So when it came to other morals I hold, if I see something bad happening in my workplace against someone else that's abusing their rights, I'm not going to go shy into management. No, I'm not. I'm going to then pull that individual to the side and I'm going to build confidence in that individual because once that person feels confident they're going to be able to do something about the abuse they're receiving or exploitation so people sometimes need to be educated and informed in order to be able to uphold their morals some of us haven't had the luxury to have morals because of poverty or whatever level of um, impairment mental cognitive or whatever right i've known that side of life so i'm going to say Morals exist sometimes for few, depending on your experiences. And definitely, you get to decide what morals you hold. It's not someone else to choose. Okay, this makes you a good person. Be that. Be seen doing that. We all are governed by an internal spirit within. Or we have um, a, con a level of consciousness. Um, I don't know if that's true, but for me, I have that, okay? That if I do something that I feel is like, if I disrespect someone in my community, whether I feel like it was appropriate at that moment, right? I step away and I come home and I think to myself, oh my gosh, Sophia, you was a right B. You was a right B, wasn't you? 
that wasn't really nice. Wasn't you being a bully, Sophia? Even if they were distasteful, we all somehow, not everyone, but some of us have that ability to reflect. So yes, morals still exist in most of us, but some of us are still wearing that mask because we want to be seen as the big bad wolves because we're still acting and we don't know how to be realist because being real is sometimes seen as a form of madness and it's seen as a, um, a form of disgrace or your nuisance or your attention. Yeah, and it's usually, it, 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 well, yeah, well, well, that's a known thing because two of the two morals that I know that have basically almost died as a result of this, I mean, they're there, but they're not as obvious as they used to be. And people don't think that they're still there, but they're there. I've seen that they're there. And like you said, because they haven't been taught, you know, how to do certain things or how to utilize certain morals or feelings. The two morals that doesn't seem to apply anymore are goodness and fairness. Yeah, they're still there. And you can make an unfair situation fair. But that's, again, like you said, this requires someone to intervene. Because otherwise, the whole thing's just going to repeat again over and over again. This, this is a historical issue, a historical problem. History will continue to repeat itself until somebody does something. You know, it's easy to point and, you know, say, you know, that's not right. You shouldn't be doing that. You shouldn't be part of this scenario. It's easy to point, but it takes an even bigger person to actually get up and actually help them. You know, it's something that I make a point of uh, uh, in my podcast uh, that people need help. Yes, but they, you can only help someone who wants it. And it, it's becoming harder and harder to determine if the person actually does need help or if they're doing this on purpose because we've gotten exactly. so comfortable wearing that mask, you know? Yeah. It's just I think that society. just like with addiction, huh? right? When somebody's with, just like yeah. with addiction, okay, we don't have to be addicts to know when somebody is ready, right? They will do the work. They'll put in the work. They'll right. go cold turkey and they'll make the sacrifice. When someone's ready, they'll make sacrifices. Right. But there's, there's some people in certain situations where they think that's normal. I've met people who live in an abusive household, and they think that that whole behavior in their parents is normal and that they really do love them. But in reality, their parents hate them, and they tell them that. But because of the way their parents raised them, they think that this whole ordeal is just the way their family operates and that, you know, this is how it should be until they get out there and realize that regular loving families don't do that. They don't beat on their kids. They don't treat them like trash. They don't tell them that they're ugly when they're obviously not. I mean, and again, this does stem down to what a person's envision of everything is, but you know, it, it, it's still, it's still a problem regardless. But again, you know, I pick a lot of weird topics. I pick a lot of interesting topics. I stick out in places I probably shouldn't, but that's just who I am. This is just what I do. The name is Neogentrix. If you want to check out my podcast or any of these future talks, I'm going to start uploading them uh, as I do them. If you're not awake for it and you missed it, you can either catch it here on Wisdom uh, or you can catch me on YouTube. Uh, on Dark, uh, The name of my channel is Dark Cancer. That is my sign. That is what I do. I look for the people who need help and help them. I'll talk to you guys later. It's been fun, but I just got home and I'm tired and I kind of want to sleep. So we'll pick this up again later. For anyone who wants to hear me, feel free to subscribe. If you have a word or a comment you want to add or you want to hear me talk about a specific topic or you want to be the, the discussion of the topic, by all means, join in. I'll catch you guys later.